What's going on everyone? It's your boy Savvy. Welcome back to the Savvy Show. And in today's episode, you already know, this is Dr. Bob. We're gonna get some heat today. And this one, I don't know what to expect. The title is ambiguous, but we're gonna find out. This is SCP-428, the crowd. So, yo, I literally have no idea what it could be besides maybe just a crowd of people that are, you know, anomalies. I really don't know what else to assume, so I'm just really intrigued to just dive deep into this one. So if you guys are excited for this one as well, and you do enjoy their reaction along the way, please remember to smash that like button for me. And that like button really helps the channel grow, and it pushes my content out to people that might be interested in checking out my videos. So each like helps, and it'll be much appreciated. And also, let's try to get at least 80 likes on this one. And remember to smash that noti button so you do not miss an upload. YouTube won't notify you if I post, even if you're sub. That's just how it works now so feel free to smash that noti button so you don't miss out and now with that all out the way with any further ado let's get this show started all righty scp 428 the crowd let's go a young woman is spending the morning in town completing a few errands she's been meaning to get to for a while Some she picks up a few items from the <laughs> supermarket gets the cracked screen on her smartphone repaired and decides to treat herself to a Danish from a local bakery. Mm. It's a relatively idyllic Tuesday, until she turns the corner into a narrow side street and sees them. Mm. It can often be a little disconcerting to suddenly find yourself staring at a crowd that is gathered for seemingly no reason. Yo, I'm booking. I'm not even asking questions. I'm skedaddling the way I came. But something about this one makes her particularly nervous, and she quickly realizes why. Each person in the tightly packed together group is grinning as if they are all in on a particularly cruel joke about her. For what? At face value, they all seem to be very different people. A collage of ages, races, genders, in different clothes with different styles. And yet, they're all walking with perfect synchronicity. One perfectly timed footfall at a time. The robots? This is enough to seriously creep her out. Whatever this strange group of people is doing, she wants no part of it. Instead, she turns and heads in the opposite direction, fast walking and stealing discreet but frequent glances over her shoulder. She can't help but notice, even when the crowd exits the small side street, that they remain huddled together, Yo. like security guards packed tight around some invisible VIP. And even worse, they seem to be following her trajectory. And there's no one else around noticing this? Bro, what? Getting faster, getting closer, still perfectly in sync with one another. How are all these people gaining so fast? Why is she just she walking? To herself. When she's around Run. a corner and out of sight, she does the sensible thing and breaks into a sprint. Thank eager you. to put some distance between herself and them. Let's go. Even though they haven't shown any signs of overt aggression, she can tell on some visceral level. Looks like it ain't the first time she worked out. That they mean her great harm. She knows if ever they get close enough, within grasping distance, something terrible will oh happen. Oh God, she's sprinting. She's soon back at her home and, those shoes? and locks herself in, bolting the door behind her. She breathes a sigh, but she's not relieved. Not really. Maybe she's paranoid, but she feels like she isn't out of the woods just yet. Those eerie smiles, those perfect footsteps. Super she creepy. She can't get them out of her mind. She slips into her kitchen and slides a knife out of the block. I feel like SCPs like this are a lot scarier than like the ones that are just like monsters. Because there's some eerie about something so normal yet creepy and strange at the same time. And this SCP takes the cake for that one, man. She tells herself that doing this is a little crazy, but having some kind of weapon in hand makes her feel at least a little bit it's safer. not crazy. But whatever the feelings of comfort the knife gives her are shattered when she hears the doorbell ring. She hadn't ordered anything. She wasn't expecting anyone. Peek through the window. Who could that be? She hides the knife behind her back and makes her way towards the door. I will close the curtains though. Ding dong. Too late though. It rings again. Whoever is on the other side is getting impatient. Hope you have a peek hole. She opens the door slightly, but leaves what? the chain in place. There's a smiling man in a business suit on the other side. She's racking her brain, trying to remember. Is he one of the people from the crowd? Or is she just imagining things because she's freaked out? Oh, he's the one in the back. He's right there. He ain't hiding from us. <laughs> Yo. She can't tell anymore. She can feel her palm getting sweaty around the knife's handle. Now they know you're home. The man at the door clears his throat and says, Excuse me, ma'am. I won't take up too much of your time, but I wanted to ask, have you heard the good word? She shakes her head and tells what? the stranger that she isn't interested in hearing his pitch, but he just keeps smiling and presses on. Do you ever feel lonely, dissatisfied, unfulfilled? Don't you ever wish that you could become a part of something bigger than yourself? 
Their group. It'd be a real weight off your shoulders. She's starting to run out of polite ways to deny him when she hears a faint tapping against the nearby glass. The young woman turns her head and looks into her living room. Oh no. There's a smiling woman standing at the window, rapping on the glass with her knuckles, grinning. Bro, oh my god. I'm if I have something like to defend myself, I'll grab more than just a knife. You know it's a group of people now. So you could take one out with the knife. What you gonna do with the rest of them? Just saying. The chill sets in immediately. She recognizes that face with absolute certainty. Mm -hmm. It's one of the people from the crowd. And now she knows for sure that the man at the door is too. But when she turns back to him, all she sees is his hand reaching through the gap in the door for her. Oh my God. She screams and backs away, instinctively slashing the knife at him. Two fingers fall to the floor, but there's no blood, just thick flesh-colored pus dripping from the two stumps. The hand doesn't even flinch. It keeps reaching, and soon, the gap in the door is crowded with the faces of even more grinning oh human figures. Oh my god. She turns and runs as the sheer collected momentum of the crowd forces open the door. Bro, you didn't try to push him. Oh my goodness. This girl, I don't know what she's doing. I would at least try to shut the door back. I don't even know why she left it open for him. I would have shut the door after I saw the girl peeking through my window. But, you know, to each their own. They spill into the hallway, tumbling over each other, but still smiling. She notices something trailing out of their clothes. Long, sinewy ropes that look like they're made of living flesh, Ooh, wriggling and pumping like with each passing second. This whole situation seems to just be getting worse and worse. Thinking quickly, she decides to flee up the stairs. If she gets to her bedroom fast enough, she can lock her door from the inside, oh, open yeah. the window, and climb down the trellis into the yard before oh, they can break in. Smart plan. In that moment, it seems like the best course of action, but only because she has no idea just how quickly the crowd can close the distance. In an instant, the crowd is up onto the stairs and following her, oh extending their grasping hands in unison. Hurry, hurry, Who hurry. Are these people? Hurry. Why are they doing this? The questions that flood her mind are soon forced out by the shock of the grinning stranger in the business suit oh my pulling God. her into a powerful bear hug. Really? He squeezes hard, and she can feel it in her muscles Stop and bones. Him. She wriggles for her life, but she can't resist his strength. I guess I wouldn't do the anything. The rest of the crowd reaches for her. She spots those awful fleshy cords again, emerging from the backs How of all these terrifying it? strangers. And now she sees what they're all leading back to. A giant, formless blob of flesh, like some corrupted, unknown organ. A huge, monstrous tumor. It pulses and throbs. Just looking at it makes her want to be sick. And she can feel the most horrible energy coming off of it. Whatever this thing is, it wants her. It's reaching for her. Fight or flight kicks in, and this time flight isn't an option. Let's go. The stranger in the suit has a good grip on her, in spite of his missing fingers. I know what your head or something. She's still got the knife. She can see the cord trailing from his back into the giant flesh blob. With one decisive strike, nice. she severs it with the kitchen knife. Immediately, the man in the suit lets go of her. Both ends of the cord flop down, spraying more of the flesh-colored pus. But the effect on the man himself is even more drastic. Oh no. He flails around, making the most horrible guttural gurgling noises she's ever heard. He heaves and vomits out gallons of the pus. It sprays from his eyes and nose like a fire hose. It oozes down and out of his pant legs. His body deflates like a punctured balloon as the oh awful substance God. cascades out of him until all that's left is a wet, vacant sack of skin and clothes quivering on the floor. But she doesn't have time to dwell on the horrors she's just witnessed. So this is all one big organism. And these humans are, are somewhat attachments on the tentacles of the blob. She needs to get out of here, now. She turns and continues running up the stairs as the crowd regroups and begins chasing her. She can hear their perfectly synchronized footsteps sloshing through the liquids of their fallen member. <laughs> they barely even slowed down. Yo. She keeps running. She just needs to keep running. A number of hands close around her body. Several of them clamp around her wrist, squeezing tight until the knife falls from her hand and clatters to the ground. Bro, how many stairs does she have in her house? Like, she's been climbing these for a hot minute. And it took the group a while for them to catch up. <laughs> like, what? They've learned already. The crowd rises up and closes around her. No matter how hard she struggles, they won't budge. They just keep huddling in. She can hear the giant pulsing mass of flesh closing in behind her. She feels one of those long fleshy cords slithering up her back. Oh, it's God. fiber strands <laughs> easing their way into her flesh. I hope y'all were, uh, no, maybe I'm just the weird one. I'll just keep it pushing. <laughs> I was thinking something else. Until the connection is made. Her eyes roll up into her head as it pumps the fluid into her body, melting away everything inside and congealing it into the same nightmarish slop that she'd just seen splattering out of the man in the business suit moments right. ago. <laughs> little by little, everything that was once her is hollowed out, Yo. filled in, and painted over. Filled up, huh? Once the transformation is complete, she smiles. 
just like all the others. But she's not she anymore. She's just another part of it. Its newest addition, a replacement for the man in the suit. Dang. The crowd leaves shortly after, keeping perfect step, looking for some new friends. At some point, everyone has felt the desire to fit in. But Dr. one Bob. anomaly takes the desire to join the throng to its ultimate extreme. This is SCP-428, also known as the crowd. In its purest state, SCP-428 is an amorphous mass of flesh connected to a number of human hosts with organic tendrils, similar to umbilical cords. The central mass is obscured by its multiple human hosts, oh, okay. numbering 14 at the present moment, Damn. and it is an extremely dangerous entity. Once an individual is assimilated into its mass, they are to be considered lost. Oh. Upon assimilation, all of the victim's complex internal structures, bones, musculature, organs, nervous system, are instead replaced by material similar in composition to the amorphous mass that controls them. All that remains wow. is their skin and vague shape. So what happens to their insides? Do they disintegrate from the liquid that's in them now? Her insides can't just up and disappear. What the heck? Being piloted by the SCP-428 hub. When not actively seeking new victims to assimilate, SCP-428 enters a dormant state. It's assimilated victims standing in a circle around the hub, audibly mumbling to one another and swaying gently. SCP-428 and its crowd will enter a hostile state if anyone travels within two meters of it. With surprising speed oh. and ferocity, members of the crowd will try to mob the unfortunate victim in a sudden ambush, bringing them into the proximity of the hub. If they remain in this state for over 10 seconds, a cord will attach to their body and their vital systems will be replaced. And they will be assimilated into tender? the crowd, just like the other victims of SCP-428 were before them. If, however, the victim somehow manages to escape before the process is complete, hey. this will not be the end of their ordeal. Should someone evade its attention, SCP-428 and the crowd will enter a period of active hunting behavior to seek out the escaping victim. Failing that, they will try to assimilate any human wandering into their vicinity. <laughs> there is no safe way to approach SCP-428 or any of its members under any circumstances. Replacement. To do so is to court a fate worse than death. When a victim is assimilated, SCP-428 and the crowd will return to a dormant state until another victim presents itself. Wow. Foundation studies have determined that SCP-428 seeks to add at least one person to its crowd every month. And if a person is not provided, then it will engage in hunting behavior, putting everyone in the area in grave danger. Hmm. SCP-428 isn't controlling a gaggle of mindless zombies, though. It is an extremely intelligent hive mind made all the more frightening by the fact that it absorbs the knowledge, memories, and skills of each of its victims. And Whoa, what? Yo, this is more impressive. Can reapply them through any of the others. Because of this, it appears to have incredibly adept knowledge of the human mind and will happily resort to using tactics of psychological manipulation to gain an advantage. That's crazy. Despite being a large crowd, <laughs> tests have shown that SCP-428 and its assimilated Boy, victims can move terrifyingly fast. This is because, due to the very nature of the perfectly attuned hive mind, they can walk or run in perfect synchronicity. To best understand this, picture a centipede skittering at great speed across a wall. So many legs, but all sharing a perfectly coordinated nervous system, yep. working together to move the creature with military precision. Even individually, each member of the crowd is a formidable foe. Once they become part of SCP-428, they exhibit greatly increased strength. They show no signs of feeling pain, and also have the ability to quickly heal any injuries. I get the no feeling pain and their recovery, but I don't get where the strength comes from because to our knowledge is only like that weird fluid from the big mass in the middle. Like these people have no muscles or tendons or anything. So they should just be like a sack of fluids. So how are they getting the strength? Like that's strange. Wounds also do not seem to impede function whatsoever. A member of the crowd getting shot in the leg won't slow it down in the slightest. However, while this creature is incredibly intelligent and dangerous, the same can be said for the SCP Foundation. And in the time since they discovered it, they have <laughs> ascertained a few weaknesses, even though some of this knowledge came at a heavy cost. Though members of the crowd appear significantly resistant to damage, Hello, the SCP-428 hub itself appears to be vulnerable to attack and more than capable of feeling pain. If the hub is damaged in a manner that would cause pain, every member of the crowd is able to feel it often collapsing and writhing around in agony. When the creature collects itself, it will retreat, guarded by its human shields. 
The Foundation has used this method to corral the creature back into containment during breaches, with the controlled applications of fire or electricity being favorite methods of Foundation security forces. Severing the connection between a member of the crowd and the central hub is also a surefire way to weaken the overall ability of SCP-428. Yep. A severed crowd member will immediately collapse, the SCP-428 material inside it liquefying and excreting from every orifice. Is that this may intensify SCP-428's drive to discover a new victim, but it can also be used as a method of population control for the crowd itself. There has been one major incident concerning SCP-428 since its containment at the SCP Foundation, and it acted as a painful reminder to all staff that one should never underestimate the abilities of the anomalies they contain. Evidently, one of the people assimilated by SCP-428 in the past was skilled in the art of lockpicking, as SCP-428 had absorbed this skill. Lucky. It took apart one of its members' belts and used the pieces to pick the lock of its containment chamber from the inside. That's crazy. It then positioned one of its female victims crouching just outside the door, the cord slithering through the crack <laughs> in the door behind her. My god. She fell to her knees and began to weep loudly, attracting the attention of a nearby researcher. Naturally, when you hear a distressed person crying, it's human instinct to go investigate and help. And this particular you researcher see the cord? hadn't been briefed on the nature and abilities of SCP-428, oh which God. left him completely unprepared for the horrifying fate that awaited him. As he leaned in to comfort the crying woman, the rest of the crowd immediately emerged from the containment chamber's door. How did you not see the cord? I know we didn't get a debriefing about this SCP, but come on, man. You you work for the foundation, right? You should understand what's going on if you see that. How does your eyes just bypass that? <laughs> Mobbing him, one forced its hand over his mouth, stifling his frightened scream Whoa. as he was pulled in and quickly assimilated. While SCP-428 could pick locks, absorbing a member of SCP Foundation staff both giving it access to the Foundation site layouts and inner workings, as well as a presentable frontman to assuage suspicion, was like getting its fleshy tendrils on a kind of master key. Damn. SCP-428 and its crowd, with the assimilated researcher at the head, progressed through the building, avoiding key security checkpoints and absorbing several other researchers and guards along the way. This was a particularly frightening development, as it allowed SCP-428 to further expand both its knowledge of the SCP Foundation and its skills in everything from science to armed and hand-to-hand -hand combat. With every new person it took in, it grew significantly stronger and more dangerous to Foundation personnel. Thankfully, it drew the right kind of attention before it had a chance to escape the containment site proper. A mobile task force was dispatched to contain SCP-428 and the crowd and force it back into its containment chamber. However, being an extremely persistent creature, this minor setback didn't do anything to quell its desire to escape. Okay. Given that several members of its crowd were now ex-Foundation staff members, it tried to leverage this in order to manipulate the people guarding its chamber. Really? This became such a problem that a researcher appended a note to its file, reading, People, these casualties are gone. They are SCP-428 now. No matter what it might say or do, they are not your work colleagues nor your friends anymore. Remember this, it may save your life. SCP-428 and its crowd is currently contained in a 5 meter by 5 meter by 5 meter cell, with walls electrified to 30,000 volts Smart. to discourage attempts by members of the crowd to break or climb them. The cell is accessed via an airlock, and entry is restricted to level 3 researchers and below, while escorted by two armed guards in order to eliminate the risk of SCP-428 absorbing a valuable asset to the SCP Foundation and coming into possession of truly catastrophic knowledge and skills as a For result. Real. Just imagine the disastrous results if, say, a member of the O5 Council was suddenly a part of SCP-428. I was just thinking about that. I was also thinking if it touches the administrator. That would be kind of cool too. Plus, would they get the abilities of the O5 Council? Like, it's pretty much alluded to that they're immortal. So, would he be in turn immortal if he takes one of them? Or another SCP, a matter of fact. Like, does he get the powers of the SCP? Is he able to take SCPs? Researchers are to remain a minimum of two meters away at all times. And it is mandatory for at least two armed guards to stay posted at the chamber's entrance at all times. SCP-428 is to be given one member of D-Class personnel to assimilate every single month in order to prevent it from engaging in hunting behavior. Due to SCP-428's frightening ability to absorb memories, skills, and intelligence, all D-Classes given to 428 are screened for low intelligence and a lack of valuable skills to ensure that the anomaly isn't being given any new aces up its sleeves. Oh my god. However, continually giving SCP-428 yeah. new victims is going to increase its overall size and thus necessitate gradual containment upgrades. Yeah, why would you even feed them? I wouldn't even feed them. It seems like you guys have a good thing going on. Just leave them in there. If they try to escape, it'll get shocked.
even if it does hunt some behaviors, what is it going to do? How is it going to get out? Like, I wouldn't feed him, especially since he gets bigger and bigger. The possibility of permanently neutralizing SCP-428 is being explored, but in the meantime, it has been given the Euclid object class okay. because of its intelligence, skills, and unpredictability. While the SCP Foundation is all about <laughs> sacrificing the individual for the greater oh good, God. this is one frightening collective that they couldn't endorse becoming a part of. Now go and watch another entry from Bro. the classified files of Doc Dr. Bob Squad? Dr. Bob, such as SCP-4910, The Grinner, for another anomaly Let's that see wants it. to alter He's gonna your dunk body on and not for the good. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further you take them into out? the SCP Foundation's <laughs> classified archives. Oh, it wasn't a swish though. Dang, Dr. Bob, I thought you were going to splash that. But anyway, this is a cool animation. I actually enjoyed it. This, <laughs> it was way more powerful than I thought. It leaves me with more questions like, can it take more than just human beings? Or like humanoids? Like, can it take SCPs? I really want to know that more than anything else. Like, if it takes an SCP, even a humanoid SCP, would it gain the powers of that SCP? It says it gains knowledge from anyone, so... I don't know if it's the same thing with SCPs. And that'll be kind of cool too if you guys want to find knowledge for certain SCPs that you're trying to find, like, you know, why are they doing what they're doing? Like SCP-682, why does he hate humanity, this and that? Like, you gain all his knowledge. So you could probably find the origins of, like, crazy-ass SCPs that you guys don't have to keep on doing tests anymore about. Like, if you go even deeper, this SCP can be a Thamuel class type. I'm just saying, it could help out the foundation in certain ways that you might not know about unless you go balls deep. So <laughs> this was cool, man. If you guys enjoyed it, please let me know by smashing that like button and also smash that sub button, join the family. And don't forget to hit that bell so you don't miss an upload. Now, unfortunately, that concludes today's episode. However, I'll catch you guys on the next one.